Hey, good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Today, we're going to be talking with Scott Davidson from the Madison Parks Department. This whole filming thing is its way too much technology for me. I don't know where to look. I, exactly. Which camera are we going That's to? Right. Where's the red light at? You know. <laughs> good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing, friend? I'm good. And you? Wonderful. It's sunny today. It is sunny. It's yeah. sunny today. There's no rain. Um, and people are going to be outdoors doing something. Yeah, And I think the forecast for next week is calling for sunshine. It is. Even though I hate looking at the forecast yeah. because if there's a slight chance of rain, guess what? It rains. It's going to rain. Yeah, it, it does. Now, you guys are into your uh, summer season, your your spring and summer season. You just got underway at the complex. But I think the last time we talked, and I looked the other day just to see the last time I had you on the program, was I think back in, in the fall for the end of that season correct i think so we're doing football and volleyball yeah. all that football good stuff. flag football volleyball yeah. cheerleading so you, basketball was successful very successful and again want to thank all the volunteer coaches for being involved in the program and the way we're able to work with the school corporation playing in eel muncie and all that and all my officials and the kids that work for me out yeah, i thought one of our better basketball programs we actually had our championship games got to play at the high school oh, wow. all three levels for our girls division our boys mm -hmm. our white division which is our fourth graders and our red division which is our sixth graders the fifth graders kind of go back and forth between those two but it was kind of fun it was kind of neat to have that championship those championship games at the high school and joe bron keller was very accommodating to us allowing us to be over there and everything so it's uh, always been a great working relationship between us and the schools and we look forward to continuing that and again kudos to everybody that was involved in our basketball program and, and that's and that's a good point because you have and this is the, the good problem to have you have so many kids as and we're talking about the winter season you have so many kids you have to use a multitude of gymnasiums in order to accommodate everybody and there's not a multitude of gymnasiums no. available no, as you well know i mean so yeah you got to do some uh, creative scheduling and mm -hmm. we have the brown gym facility which we do use on occasion for games and obviously practices eo muncie and then we can able are able sometimes to get into anderson now with the construction going on obviously that's not available but uh, hopefully it will be available once they get it done but yeah you and working with people mm -hmm. and making sure Sure we're able to have facilities and for those kids that are involved in our park and rec program because there are folks that play other basketball and we have adult basketball we have open gym and and stuff like that so yeah you got to work with a lot of folks to make sure it happens and we want to make sure it happens what's your your biggest participation season I would say baseball and softball because we've got so many levels we right. have a seven and eight year old nine and ten eleven twelve and then we have 13 14 15 all together mm -hmm. both baseball and softball and each league has at least obviously three teams four five or six and then the scheduling and putting the pieces of the puzzle together at the complex plus while that season's going on we have our men's softball program at john paul park our women's softball program going on at kiwanis mm -hmm. and then our men's basketball program is kind of ending up its winter session so right. it, it's really it went winter into spring mm -hmm. it's really busy but it keeps us busy and obviously prepping for the fields before the season starts uh, we, we do that well before we even have our application deadline before we have our workouts before we form teams once we form teams the teams practice and then we kick off our season normally that third Monday in May mm -hmm. and then we go so you you have you're like every outdoor facility you, you got prep work that you have to do but a lot of prep work is done in the fall after the season is over with has to because yeah. if you don't then you're you're playing catch up and we were talking about all the rain we've had especially this week uh we were able to actually play some games last night before thunder and lightning appeared but in the past probably less than five years we wouldn't have been able to get on those fields mm -hmm. because of water standing and water not going anywhere and field conditioner i think i've mentioned this before in this program field conditioner is awesome mm -hmm. i am a big proponent of it you hear diamond dry you throw it out there it dries it up but field conditioner absorbs it you hear it sucking up the water mm -hmm. but it stays on the field right. and then the next time it rains it's still working and we're able to and we've done a lot of other work on the fields to kind of level them out and whatnot so water's not standing anymore and we were able to get those fields prepped and ready for games last night and kudos goes to the folks working during the day because some people show up at the complex and see everything done the lines down they say oh this is great but they don't know how the lines got down or right. how the field got that way and i mentioned also before we got on the radio there was a gentleman came up to me and he says hey 
I just want to thank you. You guys do a great job. Yeah. He said, I knew if it wasn't raining today, even though we had rain the past couple of days, we were going to get a chance to play tonight. And that's because of all the prep work that gets done, mm -hmm. not the day of the rain, but the weeks, months, and even years before the rain hits. Yeah, that's, that's the part of that uh, back in the fall when yeah. everything was done. You did some prep work, yeah. and that makes a big difference because – you have a schedule that you want to stick to with your regular season games and you got the tournament and you know it's going to rain. You know you're going to have rain outs. You're going to have to push stuff back. But trying to keep stuff on schedule as best you can. If you get a spring like we just had, uh, it was before you guys got your spring mm -hmm. season started, but it, it was raining all the time. And sometimes snowing. Yes. It, it was an unbelievable it was. spring in <laughs> April. So, yeah, we got through all the weather conditions and knock on wood, we're going to be able uh, we'll get all the games rescheduled because we have some holes in our schedule where we can plug those games in and it's all about making sure the kids have the most positive experience, the coaches, the parents and everybody. So, because way back when they had positive experiences, and we want them to continue to have those. Well, let's talk way back when for a minute, if sure. we could. Uh, Madison Park Department has a, a long history here in, in the city. Um, how far back do you know of the Parks Department? Wow. Uh, well, there's some pictures that uh -huh. hang down at the Brown Gym, and uh, the folks that were involved well before me uh, helped set up the groundwork. And before there was a complex, there were games being played. There were coaches involved. There were kids that were having ultimate experiences in baseball and softball, basketball and football. And I don't have a date mm -hmm. or a year when it kicked off. I can tell you when the complex opened up. Mm -hmm. But it's just people that did that in the past. Right. And I'll go through a who's who for me and you of right. names who helped get the Rucker Sports Complex in place. But you know, programming has been in place for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Kids played ball. Kids played organized ball back then. Right. Basketball, like I said, football, baseball, softball. And we got to continue that for the kids today mm -hmm. so the next generation right. can have organized sports and things to do. And it's park and rec. Right. We have various levels. We have the really good players, and we also have those kids that are just enjoying the camaraderie and being on the team. And who knows? They're going to fall in love with something and right. maybe, you know, excel right. and, and, and do very, very well. So Park and Rec has been around for a long time. I mean, the pool dates back to the 30s. Mm -hmm. The Brown Gym dates back before the 30s, then the flood, and then it opened back up. That's right. where our office is located, the Brown Gym. So, And fields have always – there have always been fields mm -hmm. to play on, not with fences necessarily, <laughs> not with the best backstops. Right. And sometimes the bases were thrown down. Maybe you used a glove as a base, mm -hmm. but there was games being played. And they continue to be played today. You and you, you talk about the, the the complex and what a great facility it is. Do you ever and, and you and I were both around when the the complex <laughs> came into the idea and then in, into reality. What do they do before the complex? I mean, for folks around that today are younger, what did you do before the complex? Well, they had games, but it was not one centralized location. Mm -hmm. There were games at Kiwanis. There were games out at JPG at the Old Timbers. That's, I forgot about they that, yeah. They played some baseball games at Shaw. I remember playing some baseball games at Shaw. Uh, Michigan, behind Michigan Road School, which is now Anderson Elementary, it was Michigan Road at the time. Right. There was a little backstop back there. They played games there. There was a backstop behind E.O. Muncie. Mm -hmm. Wherever there was a backstop, I think they were playing games. Yeah. Lorenz Park used to have a backstop. Yep. J.C. Park, remember, down by the bridge. Yep. There was a backstop. So wherever they could find a place to play, they were playing. Yeah. And... The entities way back when in the 80s say, hey, can we get a centralized location? Where would be the best place to put it? How can we do it? Yeah. And the sign, I looked at the sign again this morning. It said a volunteer project. The Rucker Sports Complex was the volunteer project, which is amazing because you think today, okay, you've got to pay people to come and do this and this. These folks that were involved pulled it all together, mm -hmm. their manpower, their resources and everything, to make the complex exists right and of course it still exists today but before then they were still playing ball but not in one place <laughs> in so you had to have place. tim torrance had to watch <laughs> kiwanis scott yeah. davidson was old, old timbers and hopefully yeah. nothing in you know something happened that right you know you couldn't handle it but now it's at a centralized location if you got a problem with one field you walk over and take care of it oh something on field two you walk over take care of that yeah. so because i don't want to forget this let's, let's talk golf course because golf course. I, and i'm not a golfer and everybody's relieved that I'm not because I couldn't hit a golf ball if my life depended on it. But what a beautiful facility. Every time I've over, I've played music for different events over there and just I'm amazed at how well it's kept. Yeah, golf is a four-letter word for me. F-O-R-E, four. <laughs> I holler it before I even swing. Yeah, yeah. and I 
So I, I, I think I told this story before. I used to put my initials on my golf ball so I could find them. Yeah. I stopped doing that nah. because Lord only knows where they went. Never could find yeah. them. Yeah. And I don't even tee off on hole number one because the road's there. Yeah. There's a magnet for my golf balls that goes, so I don't even tee off. I just kick it off the tee and let's go on. But anyway, yeah, the golf course, Sunrise Golf Course, not many communities have mm -hmm. a municipal golf course like Sunrise. Right. Jeff Bridgeford over there and Brandon Lee, and I, I'm starting to mention names, so yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting people. But uh, Chris Taylor's been there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the greenskeeper. And they mow and they keep it great, and there's always activity over there. Uh, and the guys that play it and the gals that play it, I mean, they take pride in that in the Sunrise right. Golf Course. Um, they pour money into it, uh, the pathways, it, and it wasn't always as nice as it is now. And it, and they continue, as much play as it gets on, you think it's going to wear down. They continue to make it a pristine facility yeah. over there. Probably one reason is because I don't go over and hack it all. <laughs> but uh, those guys do a great job up there. And uh, Kudos goes to Jeff, yeah. and Jeff's been a, the golf pro for a very long time up there. The pro shop is second to none. I mean, the gr go up there and get something to eat. Yeah. Just if you want to go by and, and not even golf, go get something to eat at the grill there. But uh, kudos to goes to those guys for what they do to make that facility what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, they close down for a couple of months, but there's golfers rearing and ready to go. Yeah. They come down January 1, January 2 to the uh, Brown Gym to get their golf pass. They're ready to go golf. They're ready to go. And if or, it's a, holds up. or it's a Christmas present, you know, <laughs> for their right. year. And I always tell them whatever the price is for the golf pass, it's $450 or whatever it is for the first round. The rest of it's free. The rest of it's so, free. Uh, right. And those guys and gals that play over there, again, they, they take ownership and uh, they really love their facility. They want to continue. Yeah. And they've tried to make it even better for the next generation of kids. Right, and that for as many people, as you mentioned this, as, as many people that play on the course, and, and there's a lot of great golfers that mm -hmm. do, and there's some not-so-great golfers that do, but it's very well-maintained. It's maintained, you know, all throughout the season, all throughout the year, um, and, and you couldn't tell by playing on it that it's been very heavily played on. Right, correct. And obviously it's the home of the Madison Golf Sectional. Mm -hmm. Has been for many, many years. People, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, and people and the teams love to come and play the golf course. Right. And our teams always excel over there. I mean, whether it be Madison or Shaw, Southwestern, they do well at the home one of their home golf courses. Sure. So uh, and they appreciate to have that facility. There's a, a little league golf program for the next generation of kids that mm -hmm. Jeff Pritchford is getting ready to organize. We've had some applications turning in. There's about fifteen or twenty that are involved in that so yeah golf is something and tennis is the same way yeah. you play it as a kid but you can play it for the rest of your life sure. and and golf is a great example those guys that play over there they were kids once too yeah and for what a reason the golf bug bit them <laughs> and they continue to play and same things happen with younger kids the golf bug is biting and yeah. they excel i mean we see scholarships going to high school sure. kids all the time and that's you know, great. Landon Connor's getting yep. a chance to play. And again, I shouldn't mention names, but right. Landon, he play, he worked for me, so I know he's getting a chance to play golf at the next level. And the golf program is always very good, very good. Mm -hmm. And whether you have a bunch of seniors, you got the upcoming, you got the next group of kids that are freshmen, right. they're always going to have a very good golf program at Madison and Shaw at Southwestern. Yeah, again, Sunrise yeah. Uh, Golf Course, great facility. Yeah. Let's go to Crystal Beach Swimming Pool. Uh, the pool, a victim of the flooding, mm -hmm. uh, but it got up and running last weekend. And the victim of the 37 flood. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the, the recent flooding that affected everybody along River Road, I call it River Road, Bound yeah. Drive, but uh, the pool, they, they had their soft opening last weekend, mm -hmm. and Dave said the numbers just, in, Dave's Tucker, the parks director, every day the numbers increased. I think they had 900 on Monday paid at the gate, 1,200 at the concession stand. Yeah. Not 1,200 kids, but right. $1,200 at the concession right. stand. And they're up and running now. Uh, Kathy Potter is the pool director, uh, pool manager, and she does a great job. She takes care of the concessions down there and, of course, the lifeguards and everybody down there. And folks can't wait for the pool to open up. They see the water going in, they know, okay, how much longer? And uh, Keith Leatherman, who is always, who for the past several years, make sure it's the right chlorination and right. everything's up and running. He, he takes a lot of pride in doing that and takes care of the Broadway Fountain too and another number of other things. Right. But as soon as that water goes in, people are ready to go swimming. And I think they officially opened after their soft opening yesterday because school was out right. and uh, they're swimming today. Yeah. Uh, the pool's open Monday through Sunday what is it, uh, noon to eight, noon $4 to, eight. Dollars to get in, Yeah, $50 for a season I gonna, pass. I was going to mention season pass. Which, you, I mean, yeah. you can't beat that. No, no, and no. And 
send your kids down there. It's a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Send them some dollars so they can go to the concession stand. Yep. And they've enjoyed the day. You've enjoyed your day. And and everybody benefits from the Crystal Beach Pool. Yeah, it's, it, you, you talk about longevity. It's mm -hmm. been there forever. And uh, why it was located there, I don't know. Yeah. But way back when, just like the Brown Gym. Yeah. Why it was located there, I'll have to do some research on it. It was a one of those projects, public projects they did way back when. But thankfully, it it continues to be there. Mm -hmm. It's open for like two and a half months. Right. And then the season ends, and then we look forward to the next season. Yeah. Crystal Beach Pool. Yeah. I get a lot it. of memories there. Oh my yeah. goodness! I can remember riding my bike down Hatcher Hill to go to Crystal Beach Pool. Yeah. And there's a lot of memories going up and down yeah. Hatcher Hill. Too, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to be able to drive a car down there, yes, too. Yes, you could. Yeah, I had to go to work a couple of <laughs> And speaking of Crystal Beach, we are signing up for swim lessons, Swim too. lessons, right. Uh, for all ages, actually, they're trying to form an infant class. Mm -hmm. There's not an officially one done yet, but if you're interested in getting involved in the infant class, if they have at least 10 kids under the age of three interested, they will offer that. So call the park office, not right now because nobody's there unless someone leave a message, 812-265-8308. Uh, if you're interested in getting your infant, somebody under three, right. involved in swim lessons. Plus, uh, the swim lessons are for those three and up. We have several sessions, but they're filling up fast. Uh, Kim tells me the first session, which is June, Kim Eaglin, our mm -hmm. secretary, uh, June 11th through the 22nd, the 10 a.m. class, there's 18 spots. The 11 a.m. class, there's five. Oh, wow. And the 7 p.m. class, there's 13 spots still available. So if you're interested in getting your three-plus-year-old, mm -hmm. which we have one at home, Laura. Uh, this is a personal message. <laughs> Laura, and if Bryson wants to take swim lessons, we need to get him si signed up. They're listening on the radio. <laughs> that, that, hey, good morning, Bryson. Good morning, Laura. Uh, so, but if you want to get your kids involved with swim lessons, it's a great way to get them accustomed to the pool because mm -hmm. they'll fall in love with it and want to go swimming all the time. Right, yep. My youngest daughter, who works at Crystal in the concession stand, said, you know what? All those swim lessons you guys put me through when I was younger, I'm a, not a very good swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll just keep that to ourselves then. I said, but you and I, can, we can dog paddle pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we can dog paddle. As long as you stay afloat. <laughs> that's right. Give me a floater out there. Give me a floater. Well, I can't swim very right. well either, but so, yeah. put me on a flotation device, I'm good. <laughs> so stop by Crystal Beach Pool again. $50 for a season pass. There. Right, and they open up at noon today. Yeah. Uh, go see, if you have any questions about the pool, see Kathy. And again, she does a great job. Talking Crystal Beach Pool, mm -hmm. swim $50 lessons. $50, $50 is the fee. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions about that or concerns about that, uh, we can find a way to get you into the pool. Yeah. Just like all of our programs, all right. $50 seems to be the magic number for whatever reason, and it has been for a long time. But if there's a concern, uh, like in our programs, baseball, softball, whatever, if you are you can't afford to have your child participate, pay and play, mm -hmm. Get them signed up. Yep. Get them in a program. We have people that sponsor. Right. Uh, they sponsor teams, which part of that money goes to sponsor kids. So we have never turned a kid away. And this is my 11th year now as the sports coordinator with a park and rec. And as long as I'm involved, and I'm sure as long as everybody's involved, kids need to participate. Right. And we won't turn them away. How, how fantastic is that that you have individuals and businesses that pay additional yeah. funding to make sure kids can do what they do unsung heroes yeah. of our yeah. community and a lot of them don't want pats on the back i yeah. mean they we get some banners and part of that money goes to sponsorship right. of kids and uh, the sponsorship of teams but other people just say hey you know they and when we're doing sponsorships uh, here's fifty dollars for a participation fee. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's a kid gets to use that, and right. we make sure those kids and they don't want any kudos from it. They yeah. just want that good, warm, fuzzy feeling you get for helping somebody out to participate. So now, complex goes six days a week. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure. I'm trying to be nice. Yes. Well, our yeah. games we play Monday through Friday. Our program okay. is a Monday through Friday program because we try to encourage the kids that play travel ball right. to also play in our program. And right. travel games are normally. Saturdays and Sundays. Sometimes they play on Fridays, but we try to accommodate them best we can so everybody can be involved. Now, we will have some stuff on the weekends when other tournaments come in and use our facility. I think we've got three of those scheduled already. Yeah. The first is next weekend, mm -hmm. uh, so then the complex will be used seven days a week. Right. Uh, so it gets a little bit of a break, but our program for our baseball, softball, uh, runs Monday through Friday, Monday except through Friday. for our upper league baseball, which will play some Saturday morning games too. Okay, so. I did. I wasn't yeah. sure how the weekend schedule went. I know sometimes you use that as an overrun for rainouts. And sleep, sl oh, sleep, sleep, sleep. Yeah, nobody I get an extra hour of sleep. Nobody has time for that. No, nobody has any time. <laughs> no, for there's sleep. no time for sleep. Um, 
you're going to get through, and I know you're, you're doing baseball, softball, and everything else now, but that mindset because you're planning ahead to go into the fall sports season and other things, and there's so many programs and things going on and things coming up. and I've got the applications right here, Tim. I, I know. I, For I, the next season. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we've talked about this before. Again, if, if you don't plan ahead, you're behind. Yep. And our next season after baseball and softball, and I love baseball and softball sure. season. I mean, once we get it set up and running, it kind of runs itself except when it rains. Right. And then you got to reschedule. Our next set of seasons is our – flag football, tackle football, cheerleading, and volleyball. Mm -hmm. And we've been in contact with the high school coaches around there, new volleyball coach at Madison, Camille Krim, mm -hmm. has already rich, reached out to us. She wants to know how we run the program and what, what she can do to help make our program better. Patrick Morrison has always reached out for a tackle program to see what he can do, how our coaches can get better informed and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of that in the off season. Uh, but when it times, comes time to sign up, then we get our program up and running. Right. And the one bad thing about our fall programming is our sign-ups happen before school starts ah, for some right, of them. Right. So we got to get the information out via the radio and the newspaper mm -hmm. the best way that we can. Of course, Facebook is awesome right. now and, and stuff like that. And we have the blast we can throw out there. But uh, believe it or not, we're probably two months away. Yeah. That's, two hard months, to, that's hard to believe. Two months away from our application deadline for Little League football. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. today's the second so the third april 3rd yeah. is little league flag is tackle football's application deadline now and then we'll have a workout that monday after we'll form teams and go from there we don't turn kids away because they missed the deadline but mm -hmm. we're just throwing it out there um, so tackle football application deadline august 3rd these forms aren't really available yet but i got them right here uh flag football deadline august 10th mm -hmm. little league volleyball application deadline august 17th we try to spread it out a little bit so we don't get inundated right and then cheerleading their deadline is August the 10th. And we've got some coaches already in place, ready to go, mm -hmm. doing some thoughts about how they'd like the season go and all that other good stuff. So, uh, yeah, we, we plan ahead. We try to plan ahead anyway. Yeah, well, you have to. And use of facilities and mm -hmm. the future of E.O. Muncie's gym, we're not clear on that. And right. hopefully the facility will still be there for us to use, but we're making contingency plans just in case. So, right. And, and yeah. Again, if you don't plan ahead, you're behind. That's exactly yeah. right. Now, you guys, you mentioned the tournaments you run at the complex, um, and and they are are they um, a third party coming in to, to run? Sometimes those? third parties. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do it ourselves. Right. It's it's better if a third party comes in. We prep the field for them on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Field or fields, however they're using. Prep them again on Sunday, and they come in, mm -hmm. pay a set fee for the use of the facility, and they they pay it their officials they they take care of all that other good stuff now we'll do concessions so we'll make some money off the concessions but they take care of all of that right. for a set fee of for right. each field to be used so that's the best way to do it mm -hmm. because if if we put on the tournament i have you know i get to be there we have to have our, pay our umpires we pay our scorekeepers and everything so um I don't have to be there, but, you know, I get to be there. So um, I don't want to make it sound like it's I a privilege. Be there. Yeah, it's a privilege. So uh, it's better if an outside entity does come in and do right. it because, I mean, our facility is great over yeah. there. We want to show it off. And if we don't have outside entities, then we'll throw something together and, and put some tournaments on. In fact, Gary O'Neill, legendary Hall of Fame baseball coach, who's coaching in our Little League baseball program. How many – how many communities can boast they have a Hall of Fame baseball coach coaching Little League baseball? But anyway, mm. he's already thinking about after the regular season and our postseason's over with forming a team and doing some traveling, right. playing in some tournaments and maybe hosting tournaments. I said, Coach, I said, start putting information together and we'll do it. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. He was saying that last night while he was throwing batting practice before his game last night. Not a surprise. He, no, yeah. So Not a surprise. Anyway, so it's awesome. And all the other people involved, I, you know, I mentioned yeah. Gary O, but uh, there's a lot of people involved in our program, the volunteer coaches and everything that put their time in. because, And I think they do it because somebody put time in for them sure. when they were coming through. Sure. And I want to mention a who's who. Mm -hmm. I, I, we were talking namings, names on the fields over right. there. We've got four front fields. Mm -hmm. Delbert Leiter, Pee Wee Lakeman, Dale Miner, and Birch Johnson. Mm -hmm. Me and you know them. Sure. We know their faces. We know their importance to our community. The backfields. We have Jerry Thaden, mm -hmm. who was superintendent at the state hospital. We have Bob Crane, Mr. Baseball, Madison's right. Mr. Baseball. The Rucker Sports Complex. Many people don't know who Dr. Warren Rucker was. Right. So we got to make sure that people relish the history of those folks. So we had Delbert Leiter. Our opening day was a couple yeah. uh, Mondays ago. And thank you for using your wireless. Sure. It worked great. And Mr. Leiter came over. Of course, he coached Legion Baseball. He coached right. in our Little League program. He was one of the 
co-chairs of the community group that formulated mm -hmm. the Rucker Sports Complex. Right. There's a sign. In fact, we just had the sign replace it. It looks great. So go over there and see all the names of the people. Mm -hmm. But he came over and he threw out the first pitch. The younger generation don't know who Delbert Liger right. is. Dale Miner, Pee Wee Blakeman, right. Birch Johnson, Bob Crane, right. Jerry Thaden. Football fields, Duke Meyer and Gary Van Wy. But we do. Mm -hmm. And we got to make sure that this generation that's playing today understands that folks had a vision. Their founding right. I call him a founding father yeah. of the Rucker Sports Complex. Right. Him and Birch Johnson were the co-chairs. It used to be a cornfield over there. That was state hospital property. But they, they, they had a vision, mm -hmm. and they, they set the foundation, and it continues to grow. But here's a who's who. On the park board then, at the time, was Charlie Lavarno, mm -hmm. Bill Johan, George Westbecker, Jackie Johnson, and the parks director was Pee Wee Lakeman. Mm -hmm. On the city council was, and these are, this is a who's who. Ah, absolutely. Uh, Leona Lorenz, Nicholas Schultz, Tom Stoner, Gus Schmidt, who actually coached me. Mm -hmm. I remember him coaching. Yep. Don Jocelyn, Graham Storm, John R. Dwyer. Those are names that me and you know. Sure. And they're on the sign up there, and they'll be there forever and ever and ever. we got to make sure that people understand right. what they did back in the early 80s, and the complex opened in 83, mm -hmm. to make it what it is. And, and it's our responsibility to keep, keep that going. Sure. And not just mow the fields and line the lines, but make sure people understand that there's a reason that one of those fields, field number two, is named Delbert Leiter Field. Right. Because yeah. Yeah. They, they gave. It was a volunteer project. Yeah, it was a volunteer project. And, and again, you stand there and look at it today yeah. and, wow. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And a tip of the cap to everybody. And, and I know there were other people that work behind the scenes that don't have a name up someplace right. on a field or anything like that. And if you had a part of that project, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know... Uh, Conkle. Yeah. They're Conkles and, and uh, Tom Farrell. Mm -hmm. He coached me way back when. And he was over watching his, I think he said, great grandson or granddaughter mm -hmm. playing ball. He said, it can't be right. It can't, yeah. it can't be yeah. that I've got a great grandchild playing. Right. I said, remember when we coached? It was just the other day, coaching me, <laughs> which was eons ago. But anyway, so the memories continued to be made. Right. Which is awesome. And you see those coaches, and you know well, what it is like to be a coach at either the Little League level or everything. Sure. You'll be coached forever for those folks. Yeah. Because you're having an influence on them. And the influence has continued today thanks to what those folks did way back in the early 80s. Yeah, that's uh, at the Rutgers Sports Conference. That, that, that little bit goes a long way, it as does. they say. And, and, you know, that vision from, from actually late 70s into the early 80s and where it became a reality, you know, back in 83. And then where the improvements have come year after year and that's where I, I refer back to what the parks department has done with the visions from this year to next year to next year I mean, and we, we've talked before on this program scott where you've done you know we've got this project a year out or two years out or five years out and if you don't you know that vision from the 80s it right. goes away i was thinking the scoreboards yes uh, even though we're having problems with one of the scoreboards, unfortunately, <laughs> but it's under warranty and we're going to get that remedied. But yeah, the scoreboards, I mean, si simple things like the scoreboards. Right. People used to holler, hey, how come you're not putting. Well, it was because we didn't want to. The bowls are burnt out, the sockets are burnt out. We don't have that excuse anymore, except when one of the circuit breakers breaks or something <laughs> like that. But, um, but yeah, it, it's a great facility. And in fact, you know, like at the radio station, mm -hmm. there's a history of the radio station. Oh, Dick my. Witty. Yep. Guys like that, Joe Damask, yep. Bob Simon, I mean, all part of it. Mary Green, mm -hmm. uh, just to throw out some of the names. Um, and there's a picture down at the Brown Gym when Graham Taylor and Bill Johan were broadcasting for the radio station. Mm -hmm. It was the spirit of 1996.7 or something like yes. that. That's what it said on the sign. Right, I remember. There was broadcasting that. from the Brown from Gym the of Brown basketball gym. game. Yeah. Yeah. There's history to everything, and we got to remember that oh, yeah. and relish that and say thanks. Yeah. The Brown Gym and uh, uh, part of the project we're doing in there now is we got to get some pictures up. Mm -hmm. Well, the state championship team is we finally got it up. Right. Ray Eddy's picture is up. Mm -hmm. Dean Monroe, Mr. Basketball from 1949. His picture's up, and it's kind of kind of cool the placement we have it. Just as you're coming up the steps, right above our office, there they are. Mm -hmm. Right. There they are. Yep. You can stand and look at them. Yep. We're going to do some other things like that, and hopefully the community appreciates that we're, we're using facilities now, but we're also you know, doing yeah. what we can to remember the past. Well, and we talked about the Brown Gym and, and Crystal Beach earlier, but you look at how much age those facilities mm -hmm. have, 
And man, they're still going strong. Still going strong, and we got to keep them up. Yeah. Because the longer you wait, the more it's going to take. Yeah. And if if it goes away, it goes away. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, we the founding fathers of where the Brown Gym, Crystal Beach, Sunrise Golf Course, right, uh, Rucker Sports Complex, all of our other facilities, oh, awesome. Thumbs up to them. Absolutely. For their vision. Our time is up. I, I know, know. I'm unbelievable. I know we're 30 minutes ago. We just so started. Didn't I we? know what we did, yeah, I mean. but doggone it, our time runs out. Uh, summer programs going at the Parks Department. Stop by the Rucker Sports Complex. If you don't have a kid plan, you don't have to stop there for just because you don't have a kid plan. Stop there just to see the facility and come get a bag of popcorn. Oh, it's delicious. It's delicious, and yeah. you'll probably have to get a drink, too. But, well, uh, yeah, come on over, and yep. it's where friends meet, yeah. Monday through Friday. And we've got different levels of kids playing, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15s, and uh, just looking forward to it. Stop by John Paul Park. Men's softball is on Monday and Wednesday down there. Mm -hmm. Kiwanis Park, the women play on Tuesday, Thursday. Pe there's people out there that love those programs, too, and they can't wait for those to start. Church softball starts on Tuesday at the oh, Rocker wow. Sports Complex, yeah. and that also has a history up there. Yep. Uh, you played up there. Uh, the the uh, uh, church softball started in 1984 at the complex, mm -hmm. thanks to the parks director, whoever it was back then, mm -hmm. allowing us to come in and play right. at the complex, and they've been there ever since. Bill yep. Howerton was the church softball's first umpire. <laughs> Pee Wee Jones was after that. I mean, that's history all everywhere. But, yeah, come on out and, and enjoy – the yeah. facilities we have in town because not many communities can boast what we can boast about. You were, you were part of that crew from North Madison Baptist that yep. played out at Midway for years. Yes, I remember uh, sitting there watching yeah. you guys play and the ball's going into the bean fields uh, and bean field into the, the trees. trees. <laughs> I think the mosquitoes were the size of airplanes. <laughs> the were. story keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But, uh, yeah, that was a great sure. group of guys that played for North Madison Baptist. Uh, it was, there. absolutely. Yeah. Scott, we appreciate you being on as, as always, and we'll do it all again in the fall. Well, I appreciate everything you guys do for us too, Tim. And right. As always, whatever you need, give a holler. Will do. All right. Scott Davis the Madison Parks Department. I want to say thanks to Scott for being on Coach's Corner this morning. I'm Tim Torrance. We'll do it again next week. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. Again, Coach's Corner live from McDonald's here on Works 96.7.